Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. All right. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson with Watauga County Arts Council. I know you know that we've got a brand new gallery. We are so lucky in this community to have such a supportive community for the arts and for the Arts Council. We've been through a kind of a rough spell lately and a lot of our friends have rallied around us really tightly and among them were uh, John Winkler and Kenneth Wilcox and Roger Wright who donated a gallery uh, for us to use to showcase the work of local artists and that has just been a phenomenal gift. We are very, very thankful to them. And we just got our occupancy permit uh, very recently uh, after several different requ requirements that we met. And so we are now able to open it up and we've got a brand new exhibit that we're going to be showcasing. We actually have two. I'll bring the other folks back and share that exhibit with you later on. This particular exhibit I want to showcase, there is a, um, a group of adults, um, legally I guess we call them senior adults. They're just adults that have a good time <laughs> and they like to paint and they do so with Marsha Holmes, and uh, she's acting as the instructor in two different locations, Cove Creek Center and also the uh, Lewis Herald Senior Center. And these folks for many years, all the years I've ever been with the Arts Council, have always had a gallery space with us. And in uh, about two years ago, they renamed it the Serendipity Gallery, which I think is a cool name. So when we moved out of the Jones House, the Serendipity Gallery came along with us for the ride. <laughs> and we're really grateful to them for their support and also for coming with us. And so in our new gallery space, there's a whole section of the building named the Serendipity Gallery. And I have with me today one of the artists from that group of artists, and this is Kit Fisher. And Kit is here to share with us a new exhibit that has been planned for and worked on and schemed about for a while. Y'all have been breaking the law. Well, uh, we have been um, uh, putting this, this project together for several months. We are following uh, the, the ancient tradition of, of copying um, masterworks. Forgery. And, well, <laughs> it's the way that artists were trained from the Renaissance you know, uh, on to the present. Actually, I was trained that way. And, mm -hmm. and it works. Mm -hmm. uh, we always give attribution to the, to the artists that we're copying, but it's a wonderful opportunity to study an artist, to study their techniques, right. their brushwork, their colors, uh, and to try it out and make it your own. That's true. And you know, when you actually have to copy it, you actually get into the detail about exactly. it. Exactly. You know? Yes. You, and you'll get caught up in in some particular aspect of the painting and then you realize you've forgotten all this other mm -hmm. uh, stuff that's going on that you, that's really an integral part it is. of the painting. So ultimately you become a composite of all these masters that you've studied. Yes, yes. Which is really kind of cool. Exactly. So, uh, so who did you study? I, I uh, worked on Edward Hopper mm. and uh, he's a painter that, mm -hmm. that I first um, ran into in the Tate Gallery in London and I've just always been fascinated by his paintings and so uh, I chose a Cape Cod scene uh -huh. uh, that he had painted, The Camel's Hump, and did a little bit of research and the more I got to know about him the more I really liked him. Uh, mm -hmm. As a person, uh, he and his wife Jo painted together. They would go on car trips across the United States in an old second-hand car that they bought in the 30s. Huh. And any place that they saw that they particularly liked, they'd stop and paint. And he would sit in the back seat, and she would sit in the front seat, and they'd paint until they finished, and then drive. In the car? Yes. How interesting. How interesting. It was, it was plain air painting uh, for of. two. Sort of. <laughs> I don't know how plain air that really is. But <laughs> So now tell me, uh, you're in the classes at which location? At the Senior Center here in town. Okay. So you've watched your peers doing the similar exercise. Yes. So tell yes. me about some of the things they've been doing. Well, we have, uh, let's see, we have Georgia O'Keeffe represented, Toulouse Lautrec, um, Van Gogh, um, 
and I haven't seen every everyone's work yet, but those are some of the ones that, that are outstanding in my mind. Uh, mostly acrylic and mostly um, a few watercolors. Now, I thought I was going to mimic Andrew Wyeth. Uh -huh. I started looking at his paintings and I realized it would take me two years to even be able to do a, a, a tiny inches. little, <laughs> a tiny little um, hepatica uh -huh. or something like that. Uh, but the uh, learning to work with the colors and the shapes mm -hmm. um, has just been so, so much fun. That is really cool. So when you were uh, studying Edward Hopper's work in such intricate detail, what did you find was the toughest thing to get a handle on, to really get? I think that uh, learning to, to use lots and lots of layers in, in the painting, hmm. um, and of course Marsha guided me along in right. this process, and um, it helped me to figure out where to, where to use uh, different colors right. in a way that really made it work that you wouldn't normally think mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was you wouldn't know that you had an underlayer of red. Right. I was going to say, did you even realize there were that many layers when oh, you started no. it? Oh okay. no! Mm -hmm. Absolutely yeah. not. It, it, his paintings just look so smooth, and and there's such high contrast between the darks and the lights that you have no idea how uh -huh. complex it is. Mm -hmm. So. That was a great learning experience. That is cool. So, so in this process of learning his work, you not only learned a lot about him and the way he painted, but you learned a lot about color and you learned a lot about how to right. change how something can look. Right. You know, and right. how to wa and how to look at a painting. Yes. Yes. You know that makes a difference. Exactly. And one of the things that was that was really helpful was to know okay, I'm going to copy this painting. I don't have to figure out what I'm going to paint. I don't have to to go through any of those preliminaries, I'm simply copying this painting. And so it gave mm -hmm. me a very defined goal. It's all about technique. And as opposed to composition and well, all that and, other. Yeah. And, a, uh -huh. and attention. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh, I didn't I didn't have to spend days and days searching through photographs True. to figure True. out what it was mm -hmm. I was going to do. Mm -hmm. So that was very, very helpful. That's interesting. You know, I started um, taking painting classes, per se, when I was about seventh or eighth grade. Mm. And at the time, I had no idea why the instructor had me doing that mm -hmm. and why I was looking at paintings and trying to replicate them. Right. You know, I didn't right. know what I was learning initially. Right. You yes. Know, but you figure it out pretty quickly. Yes. That that's yes. what you're doing. So, And I did see a, po a project down at Watauga High School some years back where I probably was Shelton, but it might have been Lori, uh, Shelton Wilder or Lori uh, uh, Hill, mm -hmm. who uh, had each student do a square of the same painting oh. and divided it into sections. Wouldn't that be interesting? It was really interesting because each student had done what looked like their little piece of the painting. Yes. You know, but in some cases, they don't quite fit together exactly yes. right. In some cases, the colors are not quite the same. In some places, you know, the techniques are different. Oh, that would be so fun to try. It was an interesting experiment. Yes. You know, it wasn't something that you'd necessarily want to put on your living room wall, or maybe you would, but, you know, but it was a very interesting approach. That's right. That's right. So uh, kind, of, kind of like a, a little snippet. Well, and it's it's a it's a way to help people learn. Not the product is not necessarily exactly. the the point, mm -hmm. but the process of learning. Right. Now, if you would like a chance to come and check these paintings out, do y'all have the original paintings that you're going to put near them? We have a a small thumbnail of okay. the original. Okay. That will be posted just underneath. Our efforts. So that each of us will understand where right. it came from. Right. That's great. Yes. I'm really looking forward to this exhibit. I think this I, is going to be fun. Oh, I think it'll be great fun. And not only to see lots of different works, but mm -hmm. lots of different student works, too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can come and judge for yourself. Is that the way I would have approached that? Yes. Or what would I have done that would have been yes. differently? You know, exactly. So. So, and I hope it gives each of you not only a chance to kind of connect to certain masters and through these students' work, but also to find a new way to look at a painting because there's a lot to it. And once you start thinking about it this way, 
it's a different approach yes, to yes. looking at art. Yes, so, it is. So it'll be a very, very interesting uh, opportunity for you. We have a reception coming up. Uh, not exactly our grand opening. We're going to have a grand opening, but this won't be our grand opening. But it will be a great chance for you to get to come in and see our brand new space. Uh, it will be on July the 6th. Um, we are running gallery hours. Uh, we're in the process right now because we just got the permit of getting everybody all lined up and ready to roll. But basically, we're running gallery hours from 10 to 6 on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and from noon to 6 on Sunday. Mm. And then on the nights when there is a gallery reception, such as on July the 6th, then we will be open right on through in the reception hours. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be able to come in. And you won't just be able to see the artwork on the walls, which is fantastic, but you'll also get to have an opportunity to purchase um, gifts or small items, small works of art. Um, I have had jewelers. I have had several artists who have said they're bringing their work to put into the retail Wonderful. space, into the gift shop. If you're an artist and you want to be part of that, all you have to do is uh, we're posting on our website the uh, jury application to get the gift shop is a jury process. Uh, and also, you can always email us at uh, watauga-arts.org and let us know that you want a, a copy of that packet and we'll be happy to provide that for you. So email us or call us, get in touch with us, but most of all, just come by the gallery and check it out. It is a really neat space. It is uh, beautiful and we're very grateful to have it. And I'm so excited about this exhibit. Oh, I can't wait to see the exhibit and see everyone's work all together. That so will be neat. It, it will be a great opening, mm -hmm. I'm sure. It will. So, uh, Kit, thank you for coming and thank talking you. to us. I appreciate it very, very much. I'm looking forward to seeing your work. Thank you. Check it all out. Watauga-arts.org for this and so much more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.